Hey guys, welcome back to Wanderlusting Lawyer. I remember being absolutely terrified about my first two days before starting the Camino Fran Frances last uh, two summers ago in 2018. Uh, I, I read horror stories about people getting injured on the way from Saint Jean to Horizon or to Roncesvalles because it was so steep or the downhills were so slippery or it was just a super long day and I I don't I wouldn't say it can it almost convinced me not to do the Camino but I definitely was very 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 nervous before I set out um, so I'm gonna describe for you guys a little bit what those what those first two days or one day are like so hopefully you know a little bit better what to expect than I did um, if you've seen my video where I discuss whether my thoughts on whether you should stay at the um, at the albergue in Horizon you know that I split it into two days I did Saint Jean to Horizon and then Horizon to Roncesvalles the next day and for the reasons I discussed in that video I definitely recommend doing it that way even if you have no physical you know impediments keeping you from walking a long first day I thought the experience at Horizon was just phenomenal uh, a great way to get your Camino started so I still recommend that um, but so the first some people you know don't have the chance to do that so I'm gonna describe both days for you guys um, so from Saint Jean to Horizon it's about eight kilometers about five miles um, the biggest piece of advice I would give you for this first day is to not get overconfident at the beginning um, because the first half is a lot easier than the second half. Uh, it's really beautiful as you're leaving Saint Jean. You start to go uphill some and you'll, and you'll think that this is the beginning of all of it. Oh my gosh, it's going to be straight uphill, but it actually gets pretty flat for a while. Um, you're mostly walking either on sidewalk or on the side of the asphalt road. Uh, so if you have, if you like listening to music, I listen to some music, but I usually only had one earbud in because you'll see, you'll see traffic. Um, and there you'll realize when you hit the second half of the journey that it is a thigh buster. <laughs> you are going uphill, uh, most of the way it was about 85 degrees Fahrenheit when I walked it. So I was very hot. Um, I didn't see anywhere except I think I remember a vending machine little shelter area to get water or snacks. So you'll definitely want to bring a lot of water with you um, as well as something to eat. And then if you need to get more at Horizon, you can do that. Um, but it's mostly asphalt, which I found surprising until you reach uh, this one area about two kilometers outside of Horizon. It turns into a dirt path. Uh, straight up probably about 45 degree angle um, it's open to car traffic when people drive up to Horizon from the town just to get a drink at the beautiful um, outdoor on the outdoor uh, patio if you will that's the way they go too and I had a car drive by me right as I was starting up and it made me very jealous because I was so hot and tired but uh, it will be a strenuous first eight kilometers um, but I do think that the journey up to Horizon is more difficult, even though shorter than the journey from Horizon to Roncesvalles. So um, you'll take that dirt path up and then continue up and then you'll reach another asphalt road and you'll think that the day is never going to end and all of a sudden the Horizon Lodge comes into your view and it's uh, everything you dreamed of and you are thrilled that you chose to start your Camino. That was my experience anyway. Um, so then maybe you stay there, maybe you continue on. Um, I think it took me about two hours to get there. So if you start your day around seven, uh, it should be there around nine, nine thirty, ten. 10. You can have a coffee, some breakfast. And if you continue on uh, right after Oison, you're going, there's a pretty steep uphill section and it stays steep for a while basically until you reach the peak d'horizon where there's this beautiful well-known virgin mary statue um hopefully if you're lucky like i was the morning mist has started to clear and 
it feels like you're floating on a, a sea of clouds. And then after that, I remember there being a decent number of uphill sections uh, until we reached the little food truck that is there sometimes. Um, and then there was a steep uphill cut into the mountainside. Uh, that was probably the steepest section of the whole day. It wasn't too long. Um, and then after that, there was sort of a muddy forest area and you reach the, the Roland Fountain. And that means that you've crossed into Spain, which is very exciting. Um, and after that, to be honest, I really don't recall there being too much more of an incline. Um, that's, you know, shortly after you cross into Spain, you will start going downhill. And this is the famous um, Roncesvalles fork in the road. They'll explain it to you at the pilgrim's office, but I, I still almost made the mistake of going on the shorter but significantly harder, steeper route through the forest to get down into Roncesvalles. Um, and it would have been muddy and a lot, I knew a lot of people that slipped and actually ended up hurting their knees and ankles that day. So you want to keep, when you come to the fork, uh, you want to keep right on the asphalt road. It'll be a paved road almost the whole way down. You'll see stunning views, horses, um, wild horses and little shelters. And I mean, it was just beautiful. We actually, the day we were there, it got very sunny and then this cloud, if any of you guys have seen that movie, The Clouds of Sal's Marie or Sil Marie, um, you know that there's a valley where this cloud rolls in looking like a serpent and it was, it was like that and then it got cold that afternoon, but we got to see all that. It was really beautiful. So I didn't really ever hear anyone that was happy. They took the shorter route through the mountain um, so or through the forest. So I, even though it's a little bit longer, I would personally advise to stick uh, down the, the paved road. And then you'll come to a point where it tees into another main road and you can turn right or turn left. The signs were really confusing. Turn left, that's what'll get you to Roncesvalles. Um, and you'll come in a little bit of a different way from people coming through the forest. But uh, that day is about 16 or 17 kilometers or 10 miles. And I think we made it there. We left it around 7.30 in the morning from Orison and we made it by 1 or 1.30 or maybe even a little bit earlier. It was before the albergue even opened up. So no need to rush. Um, it's a beautiful journey. I think you can definitely do it in one day, but it is going to be a long day of almost all uphill. And I think it's pretty tough at the end of the day to have that downhill for your knees. So Again, I would recommend breaking it up into two, but let me know if you have any questions and buen camino.